The Bears win 37-17 over Atlanta, and on the same day, they clinch the number one overall pick. What are they going to do? It's Sports Talk Chicago here with John Zaglou. Appreciate everybody tuning in and hanging out here with us. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the like button on this video. Tell us all over at Sports Talk Chicago. John Meadows directing and producing. Good to see all of you after a nice Bears victory, a clean Bears victory. Something that we haven't really said nor talked about for the majority of this season. The Bears, at one point, made it a close game, but they were always up by two possessions, to their credit, even in the third and fourth quarter. They didn't really hit the lull that's been uh, hurting them throughout the season. Justin Fields had a decent game, 20-32, 268, one touchdown, no picks, and one fumble late, but it was recovered by the Bears. Khalil Herbert... 124 yards and a touchdown. D.J. Moore with nine catches for 159 yards. The Bears' defense forces four interceptions. Four. And that was a huge reason why the Bears won. They scored 10 points off of turnovers. But they got consistent short fields and opportunities to score easily with all of those interceptions. Talk about ineffective quarterback play from the Falcons, and that really hurt them today, too. Taylor Heineke was atrocious at quarterback. 10 of 29 for 163 yards, one touchdown, three picks. Desmond Ritter, who came in late, even threw a pick. Four picks in total. The run game was there for Atlanta, and at times it seemed like they were in it. But the Bears' defense did it all today, forcing turnovers, berating both quarterbacks, Ritter and Heineke. And then Justin Fields and company on the offensive side did exactly what they needed to do. Fields really had one of the cleanest games that I've seen him play all year, let alone Maybe his whole career, really, as far as clean goes. I mean, you could say the Broncos game was huge, but that fourth quarter was horrendous. This was the cleanest, complete game that I think we've ever seen Justin Fields play. It wasn't unbelievably flashy. It was, hey, I'm going to do my job. I'm going to find ways to avoid pressure. I'm going to throw a touchdown pass, run one in as well, and never turn the ball over. To his credit, he played great. I can't say anything wrong about Justin Fields and how good he played today. I think he looked great. And uh, that's a big reason why they won. In addition to their defense forcing four picks, that is a huge reason why they won here today. The Bears are officially still in the hunt at 7-9. and nine. I really don't care about that. The key is, though, and this broke during the game, the Bears now are officially given the number one overall pick. The Panthers lost to Jacksonville and C.J. Bathard. So now the Bears have the number one pick. They're officially on the clock. And the question becomes, what will they do? Now, they won today. They're seven and nine. People are happy. People are feeling well. The Packers game is going to be huge. I don't think that that should make or break what happens to Ebert Blues or Fields or Getsy, et cetera. But those are going to be questions that are going to come up. The number one pick, though, is going to be in the Bears' hands. Ryan Poles has a job making decision coming up, a make or break decision for his future in Chicago. Is he going to draft a quarterback? Is he going to trade out of the spot? Is he going to keep Justin Fields? How will they approach this situation? And that's going to be really difficult, really tough. I don't want to get into it fully now. We will throughout the offseason, even next week. This is more of a recap video, but it's something to keep in mind and start thinking about. This is no longer a well, we'll see, because there were arguments in the past that, okay, if the Bears don't get the number one pick. You might as well keep Fields. But it is official now. They have the top pick. What will they do, and how will they treat the quarterback position? I want to say one more thing, too. This isn't going to be too long, actually. This was a good game. Um, I will say this no matter what. Luke Getze has to go. We've seen that all year. We know about his shortcomings. But let me just say this. Just over two minutes to go. Bears are already up by 20. The game's essentially over. He decides to pass the football with Justin Fields, even though Atlanta only had one timeout. He puts Fields up in shotgun. Fields has nowhere to throw, held the ball too long, and then he got hit hard, sacked, the ball came out. Now, the Bears recovered it, which was fine. Not that the game would have ended in a specific way, but see, these are the types of things that we talk about when we talk about IQ and ability to call offensive plays. Why was that play even called? Why are you passing the football? Atlanta had zero timeouts left. It was 2-0-1 left, okay? You, you run the ball, you don't score, then punt it anyway. You punt it with a minute 50 to go, and they get the ball back, they score, let's say they do. Who cares? Why was there a pass play called there? Fields could have gotten hurt. Not kidding. He was hit hard. That ball could have been recovered for a touchdown. It would have easily been a, maybe a somewhat of a different game, more urgency. 
There is no IQ at times when it comes to Luke Getze calling plays. And this goes to a larger issue that nobody really wants to talk about, but I'm going to say it here now. I have no idea why Matt Eberplus is going to get to stay. Now, you could say the defense has gotten better, and they've won seven games. They've certainly improved. Let me explain to you why Matt Eberplus is not deserving to be the Bears head coach next year. Take me about five minutes, not even. It's pretty easy to say. He is the second worst coach in Bears history by winning percentage. That's not a lie. That's a fact. Look it up. The second losing his coach in Bears history by winning percentage. He did not develop Justin Fields. I don't care if he's a defensive guy or not. As a head coach, you have to develop your players, your quarterback. That's another issue. He hired Luke Getze. We all hate Luke Getze. We all say that Getze needs to go, and we're all right. But who hired Luke Getze? Who brought him in and who said, yes, I want him to be my offensive coordinator on my staff? That was Matt Eberplus, who, by the way, also, and this counts against him, had the Allen Williams thing happen and had the running backs coach get fired midseason too. He's a horrible judge of character and does not know how to hire coaches for his staff. Oh, and by the way, just a couple of weeks ago, this wasn't old news or early in the year. Just two weeks ago, the Bears blew another 10-point lead in the fourth quarter against Cleveland. This stuff continues to happen. He is not a head coach. I don't know why he's going to get to stay, according to some reports. It's not official, but it seems that way. But there have been enough things to tally up this year that would justify him being axed. I don't get why there's any justification for him staying, nor do I understand why people would defend him. I get that the defense has been good, better. But you know what? When you look at everything else that's occurred on this team this year, all the chaos and the BS that we've seen occur and happen, Matt Eberflew still has more points against him than for him. He's going to get to stay. They're going to pin this on Getze, and Getze surely needs to go. But remember who hired Luke Getze. Remember who's going to hire the next offensive coordinator, especially if Bieber Plus stays, right? So this is not going to be a sure thing, especially if Bieber Plus is calling the shots and thinking he's going to hire somebody that he wants because clearly the people that he wants suck. Helen Williams, who was bad regardless of his off-the-field stuff, and now Luke Getze too. Those are things that have to be considered and have to be looked into. You know, this team won seven games, and yeah, that is an improvement. I'm honestly surprised. They had an easy schedule here near the end, but they won seven games. Fair enough. And you're going to keep around a guy who had so much controversy and issues infiltrate his team all year. To me, it makes no sense to keep and hold on to Matt Eberflus. He should go. And Getsy is going to go, I would hope, right? Then from there, what are you going to do, a quarterback? Well, you guys know how I feel about that, but we could have more conversations on it. I mean, Fields played a great game today. Again, I am not going to take anything away from him. I thought, in my opinion, this was actually probably the cleanest game he's ever played. In general, clean. No fumbles, not three touchdowns, one pick, literally nothing. You know, he had the fumble late, but that was a bad play call. I'll give him that. Still the one touchdown, no picks. Rushing touchdown two, 260-plus yards. Great game. Is he going to be the long-term answer? I don't know. I still don't think so. But we'll see how next week goes, and we'll see how this offseason goes. The Bears aren't guaranteed the number one pick, so that is going to make a big difference, and it's going to be a big deal in terms of how they approach the situation. They could draft from the best of the best. They could draft the best quarterback in the draft class. Are they going to do that or stick with field? Remember, Ryan Poles has a job to save, to keep. He's not going to go anywhere now, but if he screws up this decision, he will be fired eventually. So keep that in mind, too. Ryan Poles is also going to be looking out for himself. Same with Kevin Warren. Same with Eberplus. If he somehow stays, it's going to be tough. And we'll see how this all goes and how this all works out. Appreciate everybody hanging out with us here today. That'll do it for us on Sports Talk Chicago. Big thank you to John Meadows directing and producing. Thank you to all of you for watching. Follow us all over at Sports Talk Chicago. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. And if all of our great radio and TV affiliates near the top of your screen, be a part of the conversation this week and all weeks as well as we provide you the best. And the, uh, you know, the, the most uh, effortful Bears news that we can. We work hard here, and we're appreciative of all of you for taking the time to be fans and join us each and every week. Until next time, so long, everybody. 